Hello and welcome everyone, I am Surreal Beliefs, and my YouTube channel focuses on storytelling through games like Crusader Kings 3. Today I'm collaborating with Paradox Interactive to dive into the features of the Royal Court, the first major expansion for Crusader Kings 3. Joining me to discuss the importance of grandeur in holding court is Sol Ray, advisor to many kings and tutor for kings to be. Greetings to you, my students. I am Sol Ray, advisor to many kings, drinker of much wine, and now instructor to you nobles in training. Today's lesson will give you invaluable knowledge about royal courts, grandeur, and how to maintain them, and how to hold court for your subjects. Now, to commence with our lesson. Of the many forms of government you may encounter, only those who function under clan or feudal systems of government with kings or emperors even care to maintain courts. From the court of England's King Harold to the throne of the Byzantine Empire and beyond, their appearance and aesthetics are defined by their local region and culture. Let's pay a brief visit to the capital of the Holy Roman Empire. We will return to this throne room in a later session to discuss how these artifacts benefit the fortunate ruler who has them. Grandeur is a measure of how famed your court is. As your court's propensity for fame increases, so too do the benefits it provides. As your advisor, I strongly encourage you to pay close attention to your court's grandeur, or the lack thereof. The expectation of how luxurious your court should be is defined by grandeur expectations. If you come from a small kingdom, the baseline of your court's grandeur expectations will not be much. As your realm grows, however, so does this expectation. After all, it wouldn't be proper for a flourishing ruler to leave his petitioners in squalor. But Sol Ray, you may ask, how can I meet the expectations set before me? Court amenities are the various services and conveniences you offer to everyone who attends your royal court. These amenities do have a cost, but they are a worthwhile investment. Let us take a moment to look more closely at each of these. We want to be fashion forward, so let us talk about fashion amenities first. It is important to make a good first impression. You can be an haute couture fashion icon at one end, or, if you spare nothing, a so 1000 and late fashion disaster. Or you can fall comfortably somewhere in between. Over time, your court will garb themselves in attire that reflects the budget that you've made for their garbs. I, myself, enjoy fine prestigious silks when dining. Food amenities will be the next thing court visitors get to experience. How much money you spend on gruel or decadent morsels will impact how much stress you let off at feasts. And understandably so, it will also affect your health. I've been told to be mindful of how much decadent food I eat. Little do they know that I've intentionally cultivated all of this mass. Having eaten their fill at a feast, your guests and courtiers will need a place to lay down their ham hocks. If you put them up in higher quality lodgings, these guests will become more receptive to your schemes. But if you send them to a dank room with little more than a hay bed, your guests will understandably leave your court rather unsatisfied. Now to discuss our final amenity. Servants are what keep your court running. The more servants you have, the more eyes and ears you'll have reporting back to you. Perhaps they'll hear the latest gossip about an unfaithful duke. Or perhaps they'll catch wind of a plot against your majesty. A properly staffed court is a clean, safe, and thriving court. Now I'll teach you how to put that knowledge into practice and actually hold court. Why should you care about holding court? Well, it increases your grandeur. Everything else that comes next, though, is left up to chance. Let's see how the Emperor contends with his subjects. Choice about what to do with an orphan, he could dismiss the concern outright, find him a home, or even take him on as a ward. Every decision you make will have some kind of consequence. And this is just one of many possibilities that you may find yourself confronted with when ruling from court. And for one more example, let's say two mayors seem to have a dispute to iron out. In a situation like this, someone will come out as a loser. In this case, the emperor decided to make the two men duel to settle their affairs. How barbaric. Our final petitioner makes pleas for their village. A devastating problem for the villager, and a trifle for the emperor to contend with. Through his beneficence, lives have been transformed through this court session. 
And that will be our final lesson for today. I am Sol Ray, your most humble instructor, and you have been outstanding students. Our next lesson will be court artifacts, inventories, and court events in the royal court. Be sure to subscribe to these lesson plans so you do not miss a single one. Lord knows that you need them.